You probably think you're looking at a vacant lot, and a tree, but some in Brownsville, Oregon, and the thousands who visit here actually see this. The treehouse where Gordy, Chris, Teddy, and Vern clung to what was left of true friendship. Piss up a rope! <laughs> it's where River Phoenix faded off screen, foreshadowing life and death to come. Diehard fans see all that in a vacant lot, but in front of it, they also see this. For anybody who buys that lot up there with a tree on it, I so hope they care about it. I hope they don't cut the tree down. It's not a store that you can rebuild or repaint. It's, it's a living thing. And she doesn't even live in Brownsville, though she's been here hundreds of times thanks to her DVD player. Today, she's among dozens of tourists on Main Street in Brownsville, or Castle Rock as fans know it from the movie. And all of them, just by being here, are making Linda McCormick's day. I'm scared because I'm not nervous. <laughs> She's organizing the town's first annual Stand By Me Day, an ode to the Hollywood invasion decades ago that produced one of the most popular coming-of-age stories of our time. Rob Reiner directed it here back in the summer of 1985. Hey, you kid, what are you doing there? Linda is calling the shots today. I have this silly brain that I'm, I'm a detail thinker, and I've been thinking and breathing what to do. In the middle of the night, I'd think of, oh, don't forget to do this, and I'd have to get up and write a note. You know what I started doing this morning? Across the street, there's a tree that drips these really messy berries. She was out there with a broom sweeping. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hey, you can't clean up the whole town all in just one morning here. The town is decked out in all things Stand By Me, from old cars to signposts that bring individual scenes back to life. It's not that Brownsville hasn't hosted a tribute to the film before, but now it's becoming an annual event. That is, if Linda McCormick is up for the challenge. I think I've worked everything out, I hope. She's not sure what to expect today, but in some ways, she really doesn't care. She's not here just to sell shirts or lead guided tours. Linda's here because, like thousands of fans who visited since the film opened, she's under the spell of Stand By Me. You guys want to go see a dead body? <laughs> It's the story of four friends who set off down the railroad tracks to find a dead body and discover themselves at the same time. Casual fans know it from this scene. Train! A thrilling moment shot not in Oregon, but in Northern California on a train trellis that's now obsolete. <laughs> The rest of the track scenes were shot in Oregon outside of Eugene, though today the rails have been replaced with a bike trail. And that's why Brownsville is so important. It's the one spot here that is almost exactly like it was in the movie. The hardware store, the steeple and pillars, the Brownsville saloon called Irby's Billiards in the movie, the Blue Point Diner, always fictional but the townsfolk hung a sign to make sure it became a living part of Main Street. In the back alley, you can still see Gordy shooting off that gun and his mouth. Jesus! Let's get out of here, come on! <laughs> They've even embedded a penny in the crosswalk, right where Vern picked one up at the end of the film. Penny! Of course, it has quickly become a fan favorite. It's amazing. <laughs> it's really amazing. Got yeah. your pictures? All of this unlocking the emotion of fans like Carrie Mazika. Growing up, I didn't have like the best home life. So um, there was like a lot of fighting going on between parents and my sibling and I. Carrie grew up in Astoria, Oregon, best known as the home of the Goonies. But she's 170 miles away in Brownsville today because Stand By Me was a more personal film to her. Why can't you have friends like Denny's? Yeah, they're okay. I'm more related to this film because you could see each one of the characters, they kind of had their own broken home 
in that way. So it was kind of like, oh, these are my brothers or these are my friends and I would hide in my room and watch movies. And then that's how I found Stand By Me. I think I was like 12 and it was on cable or something and I watched it and I was like, wow, this translate a lot into my life. In many ways, it never leaves her. Actually, in every way, it never leaves her. Carrie, believe it or not, has tattooed that iconic train scene on her back. Along with other 80s films, she says, capture the emotion of her childhood. I get the people that are fans are like, that is wicked cool. And then I get the other people like, well, I don't understand what's going on with that. It's just personal expression and kind of defines me. Back at fan headquarters now, it's starting to fill up. We have like a trivia game that we're going to do. But not everyone showing up here is just a fan. Come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here. Sherry Sinchin worked on the film as Vern. Yes, as a girl, she was Jerry O'Connell's stand-in. Oh, it's so funny, I forgot to laugh. Well, this is um, a picture we were working at the, in the junkyard scene, and Jerry's mom just thought it was hilarious. She would always mistake Jerry for me, and so when she saw us together, she thought it was a great idea to have a picture taken. Shh, stand back, men! <laughs> Pam tubes! Side. Take out the papers and the trash. And then they found that he couldn't climb a fence. Yes. <laughs> and so when you see him climbing up the fence, it's Sherry, not yes. Jerry. So and stunt butt. Stunt butt. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's iconic. Iconic. <laughs> Ooh, I love you. Love you. Among the fans on this day, Sherry is a star and mining her for information fills the gaps in their imagination. My friends and I, when we all saw it, it was out on DVD, or sorry, VHS back then. <laughs> and I was obviously Gordy. I was the skinny writer kid. Hey Gordy, why don't you tell us a story? Uh, I don't know. And my friends and I, we would all get together and, and we were all girls, but we would all pick parts and we would play parts. And I didn't want to play Gordy because it's like playing yourself. It's boring, I wanted to play Teddy. <laughs> Over the years, her family grew to love the movie as much as she did. Today, they made the drive from Walla Walla, Washington for the first time. It is absolutely. emotional. I, I actually can't go over this bridge or even look at this bridge without hearing the music. The yeah, music that absolutely. they play at the end. It's just special getting to see the real place mm -hmm. and kind of to live through that. Because so, the movie felt real too. Because you so. kind of feel the yep. emotion that they went through. And, it, and it's perfect because the weather is very the same as it was yeah. when they filmed it and what the characters were going through. So you can, you can kind of imagine what it was like for them. Well, see you in school. When I was young and just starting out, you have all these hopes for what your life is going to be like, you know. I guess this is where I'm at with my life now. Richard Dreyfuss in the film, you see him, he's got his son who's waiting on him. We both write, so mm -hmm. um, we kind of both identify with, you know, the writer at the end of the film who's sitting there and their kids want their attention. So this is yeah. kind of where my life is at right now. I have two beautiful children um, that I can bring back here, and it's kind of like bringing them back into my childhood. And she's not alone. That emotion even crosses oceans. In fact, the printed tour guide at the Brownsville Museum had to be translated because so many tourists now come here from Japan. A man was like leading a group of women, basically, and they were maybe, you know, ladies in their 60s and 70s, kind of my age. And so I got involved with them and took them around town, showed them things, and then, then I said, and I'm the mayor of Brownsville, and they went, oh, the mayor, and you know, people started bowing to me, and I, I just thought it was kind of marvelous. <laughs> I think this movie in particular will be with me for the rest of my life and I will keep coming back here as long as I live in Oregon or even if I don't, I will try to come back every year to support the town. At the end of the movie, you get to kind of hear, you know, who did well, who didn't do well, what that experience of initiation meant to those boys coming back into the town and the town was smaller. Sometimes you want life to stay small. Some of the things that you want in your life, you want them to stay pristine and like you remember it when you were a kid. I think I did it right. When it was all over, Linda considered the day a success, but still only a dry run. Her real test comes in 2016, when the movie celebrates its 30th anniversary. 
She'd love to get Rob Reiner, Will Wheaton, Jerry O'Connell, and Corey Feldman here for that, none of whom have ever met her, even though she's the one person in Brownsville keeping Castle Rock alive today. I'll see ya. Not if I see you first. I'm the kind of personality that, that likes to know I made a difference, and I feel like I did today. That these people that are mm, my fans, I gave them what they're looking for. You can't get much better than that. You can't buy that. It's something you experience. I'm gonna leave it at the foot down road.